Hey guys, and welcome back to Korean Farms. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different, but it's something I've been wanting to share with you all for a while, and I'm hoping that it will encourage you too. So I came outside to my garden today, thinking that it would be a little bit quieter than inside the house, but there are ducks nearby, and there are goats in the pasture right there, baby chicks in this building behind me. So if you hear some noise, and it sounds like there's a jet going over now too, but if you hear some things, I think they'll be peaceful at least, and it's a little bit less hectic than the happenings since then. Anyway, if you've watched our videos previously, and then you've watched the past couple that I've been posting this spring, you've probably noticed that I have lost a little bit of weight. Now I'm trying. I'm going to try to put a picture comparison up here, just so you know kind of where I started. And I am going to start with a little bit of background and history before I get into the total weight loss that I have experienced over the past nine months. Now, I'm not doing this to boast or, you know, to call attention to myself at all. I just feel like where I started and kind of where I've been in the past, um, struggling with my weight since I've been, since high school really. I mean, I cannot remember a time when I was under 200 pounds, probably since high school. And so, it has been a struggle for me and I always blamed it or put it off on something else and so for the past nine months I've really made a conscious effort to try to make a healthier version of me um, not only for myself but for my family and so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that today and hopefully it will encourage you too. So let's start with a little bit of history first. Um, both of my parents have um, high A1Cs. My mom is actually a type 2 diabetic. Um, she developed it you know, in adulthood, once I was an adult even. Um, and then I have siblings that have high blood pressure, some thyroid issues and other things. And I kind of just thought that, you know, okay, I'm probably the next one. Um, we have eaten a pretty whole food diet um, and we stay a lot away from a lot of prepackaged and processed foods. And we've done that now for about nine years since we started our homesteading journey. But even with that, I would still find myself eating sugars and um, some heavier carb items and I just craved those, thing, those things. Even though it would be like sourdough bread or if it was a homemade dessert that I made, I was still eating a large amount of those and I think that contributed to a lot of my inability to lose weight. So I've known for many, many years that I have polycystic ovarian syndrome and another way to describe it is PCOS and it actually affects a large amount of women. Um, the main side effects are like infertility and um, you have a lot of acne or ex excess hair growth um, and you have trouble losing weight. Part of that, um, for me at least, and it doesn't happen with everyone, is that I had a big problem with insulin resistance. And while I tried in the past to treat it with medications from doctors, um, I just, the medicines actually made me feel awful and I was never really able to lose weight. It was actually last August, we had just gotten back from attending the Homesteading Life Conference that Doug and Stacy um, sponsor each year. Um, it was in Hannibal, Missouri, and I was looking at pictures we had taken, um, and I just thought, wow, like, I kind of let myself get away from me, and even though I thought, you know, I was being healthy and taking care of myself, um, eating organically, and, you know, we didn't eat a lot of fast food and eat out, I made a lot of our foods, I still wasn't really fueling my body with the right foods. So <clears throat> I decided, and that is probably the biggest thing, is that I finally made a decision that I was gonna do something about my health and I was gonna stick with it. Because I can tell you there have been so many times in the past where I have tried to diet or I was going to work out and it just didn't work. But it didn't work, I really think, because I wasn't in 100%. And I was like, this is hard. And I'm not going to lie to you and say that this was an easy process because it really wasn't. I mean, we're going nine months now and I've lost over 70 pounds. But I can't tell you that it was a walk in the park every single day. And the weight loss isn't the only thing that I have noticed with losing weight. Um, it's the other benefits that I've noticed that have probably made a bigger impact on me than the weight loss. I guess I'll start with what I did and then I'll start telling you some of the benefits I started to notice early on. 
and I guess it's important. Well, hello, little butterfly. I guess it's important to point this out too. I didn't use any shakes, pills, shots, um, some of the other popular gimmicks that are going around right now, um, or that have always gone around, I guess, um, or specific diets or anything. I really paid attention to the way my body was feeling when I did these things. So the first thing I did was cut sugar. And when I say sugar, pretty much all of it. I cut out, I mean, we use organic cane sugar when we're making kombuchas and things like that. And I still do drink kombucha, but I cut out sugar for myself. I cut out using a ton of maple syrup and, and honey because I would use those too, but I was finding that I was using them in such large amounts, I might as well be using sugar because either way, they were still raising my blood sugar, my insulin levels. Now, for someone like me that has some insulin resistance from years of um, <clears throat> just fighting my body um, and my hormones and insulin and way too much sugar and way too many carbs in my diet, um, my goal was to bring my insulin levels down to help my body get out of this insulin resistance because I truly believe that you can heal your body of that with real food. And by getting your body back into this rhythm of having lower insulin levels and your body able to then um, create, release, store, and use insulin um, as it's supposed to and not just pushing uh, fat cells and pushing glucose and into your body and into your cells, creating fat. The first thing I did was to cut sugar. The first month, it got a little bit easier, but those first four weeks were tough. My body wanted that sugar. And I started to get headaches in the beginning. Like after mm, about three or four, probably about three to four days in, I started with headaches. I didn't feel good. I was sleepy. I felt like I was achy and I was like, I just had to keep reminding myself, okay, this is my body detoxing and getting rid of going through this really like withdrawal from not having sugar for so long. This is awful. Like I've done this to my body for so long. But after those first couple of days, actually a week of like headaches even, just I just felt blah. But I had to keep telling myself, you know, I, I had to keep telling myself that I was fueling my body with good foods. I was eating lots of protein, good healthy proteins, lots of veggies. It was still summer at this point. So veggies were still, you know, easy to get in my, our garden. Um, and then I would eat fruits and when I ate fruits, I focused on berries like strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, and blackberries and, um, raw dairy. So, um, cream butter, cream cheese. I would use some cheese, um, milk when I would make smoothies. Um, what else? I kept my carbs, um, to really healthy carbs. So if I was going to eat car or when I eat carbs still, um, I focus on them coming more from veggies and fruits. Um, and I really don't eat a lot of breads, like heavy breads and pastas and things like that. And I have found, um, some substitutes that actually make me feel so much better versus putting all that in my body. So cutting sugar was number one, <clears throat> making whole food choices, not eating a ton of starchy carbs. Um, so you're not going to see me sit down and eat like a bowl of spaghetti. Like I would have done that before. I would have made pasta and I would have put sauce on it and I may not have had any meat on it. And that's what I've eaten, would have eaten and a big bowl of it at that. And I could have eaten a couple bowls, but I would find that a couple, you know, within an hour, or hour and a half later, I was hungry again, but that's because my body was turning all this pasta, carb, heavy carb into sugar. And I wasn't really fueling my body with the fat and the protein that helps you to feel full. So over the past nine months, I've done a lot of learning more about foods and about what my body needs and how different foods um, set with my body and what makes me feel really good and what doesn't. So my meals are pretty simple and I don't cook really different for myself versus our family. Um, I make sure that we're all eating healthier now um, but some of the benefits that I've also noticed are that I had for the longest time this trouble with my foot it was every morning when I got up it was just so achy it hurt to walk on it I felt awful 
And within like two months of starting to really fuel my body with good foods, I started noticing, wow, when I get up in the mornings, my foot doesn't hurt anymore. And I was like, man, then my joints weren't nearly as achy. I had gotten to this point last summer where every day I felt like I needed a nap. Like I was like, what? I don't, you know, it's cause I'm turning 40 and you know, I just, I need to sleep more. I'm more tired. We're busy. I've got four kids. We're running a farm. We've got the garden. And I contributed all my tiredness to that. But after about, really after the first month, I noticed that I wasn't nearly as tired. I felt like I had more energy. I could do stuff. Um, and so really I focused from the end of August to the beginning of January on my food. And that was my only focus. I didn't add an exercise at this point. I wasn't going out running or walking or um, doing any of that. I really focused on just cleaning up my plate and staying away from sugar. Those were my first two focuses was sugar and cleaning up my plate in general. When I would fix my plate, I made sure every meal um, that I had a protein, some good veggies, and some type of healthy fat. So it could have been avocados or a butter I was using, you know, extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil. Um, I counted my, my dairy in as fat. Um, and remember, it was raw dairy. You know, you can do what you choose, but this is what I did. Um, you know, maybe if I had broccoli, maybe I put a little cheese on it. Or um, I got into where I was making in the afternoon, I would make my snack and I would have like, um, I would take like a little bit of cream cheese, some almond milk, a couple strawberries. Um, I did put some cottage cheese in there, a little bit of like collagen or protein powder, and I would blend that up and it would be my smoothie. Um, I did use, I mean, little tiny bits of stevia to give a little bit of sweetness, but it wasn't a sweetness that it was like addictive that I had to have more sweet. Because I found after that first week, I mean, after that first month of really coming off of sugar, my body stopped craving the sugar that it was getting used to getting rid of. So <clears throat> I would make these smoothies. It would be my snack in the afternoon. And as, as I got closer to December, I was noticing that I wasn't um, hungry nearly like I used to be. I would drink a ton and I still drink a ton of water. I keep my water with me. It goes with me everywhere I go. Um, I use a little bit of a Redmond um, Relight in my waters to keep me hydrated. And once we hit January and I had lost a good, let me think now. Actually, I can tell you, let me, let me go. I kept in my phone and I kept a log with, all I did was the date, um, my weight, and then I took some measurements and did my bust, waist, hips, and thigh size for that book. Um, and I have kept this in my phone and just like gone through um, over time. So in December, the end of December, so <clears throat> in December, and De at, at the end of December, this was right um, around Christmas time, I had lost 41 pounds from August to um, December. And I started thinking about, well, maybe I should change, what should I kind of change something up? I kind of hit this little bit of a plateau there after I've lost 41 pounds. And I was like, well, what can I do differently? And I have heard so much about intermittent fasting. And I was like, there is no way I can go without breakfast. Like I'm starving, you know, when I get up in the morning. And so I started reading a little bit more about intermittent fasting and how it actually helps your insulin levels, which is what I was trying to combat to begin with. I knew that if I could get my insulin levels low enough, and not low, like bad low, but if I could bring my insulin levels down, <clears throat> that my body would start responding and start losing weight. Because I just knew with high insulin levels, the amount of sugar I was consuming, and my history of PCOS with insulin resistance, um, that that was what was going to be best for me. Now keep in mind, I said before, I had taken medications. I had been prescribed medicine by doctors, but never sat down and like gone over a diet. Like they never said, try, you know, eating this or this, or like, I never had like a plan from anyone on what I should be doing. Um, but I had these medicines that were supposed to help me. And every time, you know, I would go to the doctor, they always said, you know, if you lose weight, it would really, you know, help, you know, it would help if you could lose weight, you know, it's so much healthier for you. 
okay but i struggled if you have pcos or if you have insulin resistance it doesn't matter what you're doing it is so hard to lose weight and i have been there and i have tried and i have gone and i've gotten off diets and i've gotten on diets it wasn't until I made up my mind and said, this is going to be a lifestyle change. I have got to do better for me. I want to be there for my kids. I want to be there for my family. I want to keep enjoying this life that we have. And I knew at the rate I was going, I couldn't do it the way I was eating and the way I was living. <clears throat> so right after Christmas, the beginning of January, I decided, I was like, I probably should start trying something else. And so I decided to start some intermittent fasting and I did. And it was so much easier than I ever thought it was. And what I do typically now <clears throat> is, well, what I started then was I would wait and eat around 11 o'clock every morning. So, you know, and I would end eating. I tried to stop eating somewhere around 7 o'clock, but let me just say that life doesn't always work with me. And sometimes with the garden and the animals and children and soccer practices or Christmas or whatever's going on, we would eat dinner at like 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. Just the way it was. And so after I ate dinner, I wouldn't eat again until 11 o'clock the, the next day. So I really didn't um, pay attention to like an eight, 16, you know, 16 hours of fasting, 8 hour of eating window. I didn't really focus on that like some people do. Um, my, at that point, it was just, okay, I'm gonna, after I eat dinner, I'm not eating anything else until 11 o'clock the next day. So that's how I started my intermittent fasting. Got through Christmas and January started and I started my intermittent fasting and I did it for about three to four weeks. However many weeks are in January, I guess I could go back and look. But by the end of January, by January the 30th, I had hit the 50 pound mark and I had lost 50 pounds. Um, I had lost a total of, because I kept it, let me tell you. And I still kind of keep. Um, I had lost 50 pounds. I had lost three inches in my bust, five inches from my waist, six and a half inches from my hips and two inches in my thighs so at that point I lost 50 pounds and um, those were the inches I had lost um, and I decided at this point I was comfortable enough to start exercising because I'm not gonna lie at the beginning I didn't have the energy and my body wasn't able to keep up with but so much exercising so here's one example I remember when we were in Hannibal Missouri um, at the Homesteading Life Conference and we hiked um, up to the top of the lighthouse there in Hannibal. Um, we took the stairs up. And I remember by the time I got up there, I was like, oh, I was out of breath. And I was like, woo. And I haven't said this before in this video, but I was about 200, right at 275 pounds when I started losing weight um, in August. So I had made it down to 225 pounds and I was like, okay, I think I can start exercising now. And I probably could have started exercising before this and I'm not here to discourage anyone not to start exercising beforehand I'm just telling you what I did and what worked for me but at the beginning I really need to focus on food I could only dedicate so much time or mental space and energy to getting things in order and because I knew that this was gonna be a lifestyle change it wasn't like a fix I was expecting to see in a couple of months time that I had the time to focus on from August to really January, I focused on nothing but food. Cleaning up my diet, really paying attention to the foods I was putting in my body, how I was fixing my plate, coming up with new ideas um, for dishes that needed rice or dishes that needed a lot of potatoes and how I was going to alter them. Um, I use a lot of cauliflower rice, I'll tell you now. Um, it's funny, the things that you could put in place of pasta where if we're cooking spaghetti, you know, I'd still fix pasta for the kids and my husband, but um, I might put mine over zucchini noodles or I've done green beans. Um, I just look for different ways to cut out some of those really high starchy um, foods and I just put vegetables in their place and I am just as happy and satisfied and I feel better. That is really my biggest thing is that I have noticed all along is that I feel so much better it's not about me cutting out something because it's going to help me lose weight it's more about i don't eat that now and i know the difference i feel in my body so <clears throat> in january 
I started a program um, with Mission Rise and my friend Stephanie Stockling has this wonderful at-home program and I will actually link her website below. This isn't sponsored or anything by her. I just have found so much joy in the workouts that she puts out. Um, it's four 20-minute workouts a week and it's on resistance training. We do um, upper body twice, two upper body workouts. Um, a lower body workout and then there's our freestyle workout um, and there are other workouts when you join she has tons of workouts that you can go back from years past um, some ab workouts some stretching I mean all sorts of things you can go through and you can do more than four workouts a week if you want um, but she puts out four brand new workouts every single week and since I started that the last week of January I have not missed a week of not getting those four workouts in from January all the way to here we are the last week of May so I have found that I enjoy the workouts that I feel better when I do the workouts and I don't want to miss the workouts and so I don't always do like Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday she releases the videos Monday through Thursday but I don't always do that I mean it might be I hit a Tuesday or um, I hit last week I was had some sinus cold junky something I did not feel good at all for the at the beginning of the week so i ended up doing a wednesday thursday friday saturday were my workouts last week i skipped days it depends on our schedule but i do not miss my four workouts at a minimum i do my four resistance training workouts every single week now but i didn't start that until january after i lost 50 pounds already um and i have moved up my weights um i just feel stronger another thing that i like with mission rise is that she has benchmark benchmark weeks so they had actually just done one when I joined in January and so I did the one in April um, and then we'll do another one in July and I'll be able to see the difference in push-ups um, squats uh, plank hold and what's our last one Ooh. oh um, setups abs so those four things um, you do a benchmark and so you do that four times a year and then you can track your progress and to see how much stronger you're getting. So I'm actually excited to see what July looks like for me because like I said, they had just done it when I started in January. So I started those workouts and the other thing I started was when my daughter was doing soccer practice, I would walk. So when the other moms were sitting around chatting, it wasn't that I didn't want to chat, but I had made a commitment to myself that I was gonna make a healthier version of me and that meant sacrificing some other things. I'd already sacrificed food. And I won't say sacrifice food, but I already cut out things to make a healthier version of me. And I felt so much better. Like I could already tell how good I felt. And so adding in the exercise, I just knew that it was gonna make me feel even better. I wanted to get back in shape. I mean, like my cardiovascular system needed it. My pulmonary system needed it. Um, I could just tell from hiking up that lighthouse. I would love to go and hike up that lighthouse right now. Um, because I think I would feel so much better and I'd be able to see a definite difference. Actually, actually, I'm going to tell you a story of something I've started just this week and the difference I can tell in that already. So <clears throat> I know that I would feel so much better and I would be able to like run up those lighthouse stairs. But I started those workouts and I don't miss them. And that has made a huge amount of difference for me. It has started, um, not only have I lost over 20 more pounds since I started the weight workouts, but I have seen my body tone up um, where I've lost a lot of weight. I've seen my arms start to tone, my legs, um, just defining my waist more. And I've seen all that just since starting the workouts in the end of, I started the last week of January. So February, March, April, May. So in four months, I've seen that much of a difference and I enjoy my workouts so much that I do not want to miss them. Um, I will say that my kids and my husband have been on board since the get-go and even once they started seeing the changes in my body that I didn't see right away um, they would encourage me my husband gives me time to get my workouts in every single week and I am so thankful for that like he is on kid duty or farm duty house duty whatever take care of everything so I can get these 20 minute workouts in and then if I take our daughter to soccer you know he handles everything here at the farm and house while I'm gonna take her to soccer and I walk during that time and so sometimes I started off working walking just like a mile and a half and then I was like oh I can do two miles um, and through the spring here I've started walking about three miles when she practices um, now since 
spring has hit since about mm, the beginning of May. April, end of April, beginning of May, I kind of have hit this plateau in my weight loss where I'm at this like 72 to 75 pound weight loss now. And <clears throat> I've kind of have plateaued. So prior to this, I didn't count um, carbs and calories, fat, protein. Like I didn't count any of that. Macros mean, like meant absolutely nothing to me. Um, all I did was clean up my plate and then I started my exercise in Jan the end of January. So those are the two things that had happened so far. Now that I've gotten into this nine months um, now, I'm starting to pay attention a little bit more. And this is why I say this is such a learning process because I have learned more about what my body needs. Like, okay, I am um, now running and not walking as much, but um, running, doing these weights, I've increased the weights that I'm lifting. Um, my body has adapted a little bit more to these food choices and how I've been eating and now exercising. And so now I've started looking at things more about like upping my protein, <clears throat> looking at my calories. Am I hitting right about like enough calories a day to sustain and fuel my body for when, oh, the sun went behind the clouds. Um, to fuel my body and to fuel these workouts and the work that I'm putting in. <clears throat> and so I have just started with an app, putting my food in every day. Yes, it's a little bit more work, but what I generally do is I eat, I put it in, Sometimes I might plan a meal ahead of time and put it in to kind of see where I'm heading. But um, I do that and then I do I do log my exercise in my app also. Um, and then my new thing for this week, which I have run in the past and I do not like running. And I've had this conversation with other people and they're like, just do things that um, bring you joy and that you are excited about when you're exercising. And I completely agree with that. I love my four 20 minute resistance training workouts. I love them. They make me so happy. I, I feel better after I do them. Um, it gives me a sense of accomplishment knowing that, oh, okay, I've already done one. Okay, I've done two for the week. Oh, I've only got two more. I'm halfway there. When I complete the four for the week, I just feel a sense of accomplishment getting them done. But my daughter asked me if I would run with her. So she plays soccer and in her off season, she's calling it, she wanted to run. I do not like running, but my daughter asked me to run with her. So guess what I've been doing this week? We've been running and we started with just a mile and a half. And I can't tell you how good I feel that I can run the entire mile and a half. I'm not tired. I don't feel like I'm dying. I can run the whole thing. I don't have to stop and walk. And I have felt great. Now, is running something I want to do every day? No. Am I going to keep doing my four resistance workouts? Yes, I love them. I love feeling stronger and seeing my weights increase and knowing that I'm doing something better for myself, that I can do a full push-up now and I don't do my push-ups from my knees anymore and that I can hold a plank from my toes and not, you know, on my knees and forearms. And I love seeing that progression and um, the change it's made in my body. So I will keep doing those and do my plank every day. And that's okay. where I'm 72 to 75 pounds down and what are my goals and what's next? I would love to lose 100 pounds, okay? 100 pounds would be wonderful. Like, I, I know how I feel now. I can only imagine how much better I would feel, you know, then. Now, other people say, well, you know, have you looked at the CDC? Do you pay attention to your BMI? So, I didn't start looking at my BMI until like in the past month and I've looked at it and seen what the CDC says I should be I don't know if that's realistic or if my body will ever get there because my body in my adult life has never been so we will have to see I'll have to get back to you on that but I would love to lose 100 pounds total um, that's where my goal is right now I kind of on the same note I keep in my phone of my weight and my measurements that I've kept since the beginning. I keep little goals down at the bottom and I just have them bulleted and as I would hit, so let me see, as I would hit goals I just check them off. So let's see. There were certain things that I made as goals that were important to me. So the very first thing was losing five pounds. Like that was a big deal to me because to be able to lose five pounds before didn't happen easily. So five pounds was my first goal. Then 25 pounds. Then it was the weight I was prior to giving birth to our last set of twins. 
Um, that was my goal. After that, and then I set another goal, and then another goal, which was the lowest weight that I could remember ever being in my adult life. And then um, from there, I would just I just keep this list and I would check them off as I um, made those goals, and then I would start creating new ones. Um, so to be under a hundred, to be under two hundred pounds, to be, and then I was like, wow, it would be amazing to be, you know, one hundred and ninety pounds. It'd be great to be like one hundred eighty pounds. You know, so then they kind of just go like ten pound increments from there. Um, for some reason, I have one seventy five. I think set in my phone. That's my one hundred pound mark. Um, and I don't know what happens after that. My main focus is continuing to feel good, um, look at the foods on my plate and know that I am fueling my body with good healthy foods and I really just think the rest will follow. I do still weigh and do measurements. I can't say that I do them every week now. Um, it might be two weeks before I do them, but I do still check in and I've kind of learned my body. Um, women will understand that there are usually I can lose weight about three weeks out of the month um, I don't always lose weight on that on that one other week during the month but it's okay I don't let it get me down where before I'd be like oh gosh I didn't lose anything this week I just keep going um, and so I check in keep a check with myself and I also don't rely on the scale I look I look at um, how my clothes are fitting how I'm feeling stronger how I'm able to increase my weight lifting um, how I'm able to run and I'm not out of breath those are things that I measure my health by now versus always relying on the number on the scale so while I do keep up with it it's just not before I would have been like I, I don't want to be this way I'm miserable at this weight but now it's so much more than just weight so my encouragement to you is if you have struggled with weight for a long time if it's something you have wanted to lose weight and you don't know where to start just start somewhere start with your diet start easy you know, change one thing whether it is you're going to cut out stay out of the drive through or whether it's you're going to um, eat more whole foods or you want to just don't overcomplicate it for yourself and when you do it i really think making changes that you can that are sustainable a little bit at a time so where i worked on my food from august to january and then i started some intermittent fasting kind of the beginning of um, january and oh i didn't go back to that but my intermittent fasting right now generally runs from that i do a um, 16 and 8 um, eating window so my eating now runs more along a 16 and 8 intermittent fasting um, schedule so i start eating around 11 o'clock and i am done eating typically by seven o'clock at night so then most of my intermittent fasting is while i'm sleeping um and it has worked for me so um my changes i'm making now are up in my protein um really kind of keeping track of calories protein fats carbs and stuff in an app um getting at least four workouts in a week which are my resistance training workouts and then anything extra i get whether it be running with my daughter or walking or um whatever i'm in the garden a lot right now uh, putting things in so any activity outside of that i just count as a bonus so but at least active four times a week still watching my plate i am now putting stuff into an app and I still do, I focus more on a 16-8 intermittent fasting. So that is, I still don't eat sugar. Um, I've had a taste, what did I make? Oh, I made this strawberry, like frozen strawberry lemonade um, thing for my husband last week. And um, I took a sip of it and I was like, whoa. Like even the smallest amount of sugar is a lot to me now. Things taste really sweet. But I do not crave sweets. I don't crave a ton of carbs like I used to. Um, my body has just adapted so well and I feel amazing. So thank you so much. I know this is kind of a long video and you may not care at all, but if you're one of those people who has struggled with your weight for a long time and it can help you um, just start somewhere. Start with one thing, start small, and just make changes along the way. I know that you can do it and if you need encouragement, reach out to me. I do not mind sharing. You know, I mean, this is what I did, but I don't mind talking to you a little bit more. Um, if my story can encourage even one of you, it's worth it to me. So thank you so much for watching.
don't forget to hit subscribe and if you have questions or if there are things you'd want to know if you want to see some of my meals if you want to um i don't know if you want to take you through a day of this is what it's like i'll do that too so leave comments below thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time right here at cram farms